quick overview of my career, brief career. I was a game design freelance and consultant at Pour Le Jeu, my own company in France. And also during three years, I was a producer at Nobilis Producing. And I have produced more than 20 games with one big uh, achievement, which was trying on PSN. So in order to understand really uh, how we and how can psychology help, a little look at what is psychology. Psychology is a study, is here to understand what is the mental function and the behavior of our target. I mean, we are game designers. What we want is to understand the player in order to propose to have the best game for them. And in order for that, the psychology will help us to understand what will, what is their emotion, what are their motivation, their personality, their relationship with the game, with the character. So yes, the field of the psychology can really apply to what constitutes the base and the target of our game industry, the player. As you know, if we fail to target, to have the player, we fail our game and also we could lose companies. So, yes, talking about player, I'm not sure you are aware that there is in, uh, there is two types of play. Yes, players come from play and uh, Roger Kellois in 1950s has developed a theory and we come here into the psychological aspect of the players, two type of game, two type of play. The first is the payda. The payda is a play where there is no rules. I mean, as children, we all play cowboy versus uh, natives without any rules. We are creating the rule on our own. And that is the topic of the payda. On the opposite side, we have the ludus. The ludus is a play where we have some rules. The game is constituted by rules, and in that way, we should respect them, improve them, but we should stick to them. And video game is coming inside mostly this category of play. Also, you can see that Roger Kellois has defined four types four types of type of gaming, something that we will see during the presentation. So based on that, what is a game? A game, according to Salen and Zimmerman, is a system where players are engaged in conflict where they need to overcome. And in that way, you have to define a system, a rules to define it. And with this definition, we could already see the link again with psychology. Psychology is about the mental function, the behaviors of our player. And in this really great definition by a great game designer, we can see the word engage. And this word engage will be the uh, mantra, the motto of what should be the Game, dev game designer elements. So yes, based on that, what is the first thing that is important to the player is the character. What we can see is depending on the type of character, the avatar, the character and the puppet, the relationship is different. The avatar will be more an empty vessel where the player will embody with his own feelings and the puppet will be just something to manipulate. So the relationship and the engagement from the player in terms of his own mind will change. And that's what we need to understand when we see games like The Walking Dead and The Last of Us. We can see two really different relationships that could be categorized by an emphasis, meaning that your player is really inside 
and feels what the character is doing, that what is really good in Walking Dead. And on the other side, we have the empathy. Empathy is just you agree, you are agree with the values, with also uh, the uh, mental characteristic of your character. I mean, I don't say that there is a good and a bad relationship. There is two and you have to adapt regarding to your player. And that's what will we define. Because your player and your character will follow a journey, a journey constituted by several steps. Those several steps, you have 20, uh, 12 that have been defined by Joseph Campbell. And every a story from nowadays, from movies, from gaming, uh, we could uh, take the example of Star Wars, are following those steps with obstacles and those obstacles are overcome. So again, close to the definition of uh, Zimmerman. And therefore, what we see is that we should stick to a narrative aspect in order to create this proximity, this understanding of what are the outcome of the character and therefore for the player to understand the motivation of, the, of his character and so on, getting into the game. And why I want to, to talk about the narrative aspect is, yes, it's really, it's sometimes important in the game, but it's also regard to the rhythm of the game. And in terms of rhythm, yes, we have the narrative rhythm, but we have also the rhythm of the level design. And yes, here in level design, you should also tell a story, but also manipulate a little bit the player and his feeling. What we see with this example of Tiff, I mean, you all know about Tiff from Eidos. The next game will be released soon. We have different ways, different feelings from the player that evolve during the game. And this evolution is really important in terms of intensity because it's the base of what we call the theory of flow. The theory of flow should be really the base aspect of a game design work because if you fail that, your player won't be engaged and therefore will drop the game. As you can see, the flow is a flux is a flux between the challenges. Challenges are the obstacles that you uh, give to the player and the skills are the one from the player. And if you put too many challenges and not enough, and you ask too few skills from the uh, player, you will go into too many difficulties, you will go into too many challenges and this is the case of uh, Donkey Kong. How many of you have played Donkey Kong on Wii? Ah, only that few. So there is really, it's a great game, but it's really, really difficult. And what we can see is, as it's unfair, players are, are dropping the game. On the other side, if you are asking too few uh, skills and there is no challenging in your game, it will be boring and the, the player will drop because of this. And that's the case of New Super Mario Bros. I mean, it, I'm not against this game, it's a really great game, but it's too easy for everyone and therefore it's not such a great game in that way. So quickly, yes, we have different kind of feelings, different kind of uh, behaviors that the player can do. And if we follow all those theory, we come to something really interesting, is what I call my theory of flow. There is multiple channels, multiple channels of feelings, and if you succeed to make it evolve correctly, you will always get into this flow theory, into the flow aspect, and therefore your player will be really happy. So in that way, you can ask me, yes, but how can we answer? How can we, can we know our player? And that's really my main element of this presentation. There is, according to Bartle, there is four types of player. 
there, and those four types are divided between the ones who are more about killing people, about more acting on people, as we can see with Battlefield. We call him the killer. What he wants is to be the best. He wants to overcome the other. On the other side, we have the achiever. The achiever is someone who wants to act on the game and to understand the mechanism. So he will be someone to try to break your game, to understand the hidden rules, and to achieve the best from it. So that will be the case of Angry Bird. We can also link it to the Alea of Roger Kellois. The socializer, as you can understand, is someone who wants to play with people. What's interesting him is not to compete, is to collaborate. So it will be more in what we have as a mimic cry in Roger Calois. And the explorer, at the end, he wants to participate to the world and to discover. Here he just wants to have a beautiful journey and that will be the case with the player of Portal 2. And what I, what I want to speak about those battle types, it's because, as you can see, according to the battle types, you have a relationship with the game genre. So if you are creating uh, a game genre, I mean, uh, you are from game companies, if you decide to say, OK, I want to do an FPS, Therefore, you will have to answer in terms of skills, you will have to answer in terms of game mechanics to those guys, the killer and the achiever. So that's really important if you want to create a game to understand where you should go. And in that way, what is better to have already pre-made feature or game mechanics? As you can see with this example, depending on the battle type, you have different expectations from the player. And in that way, you can see that if you want to target, for example, an explorer, you will need to include a voting system, a collecting system in your game. So knowing those types will help you already to define, yes, this behavior should be answered by this game mechanic. And therefore, you have already some basics of your game design in that way. But that doesn't stop here. I mean, here, what we want in for the player is to have fun. And according to Bartle and according to what we see as Lazaro, we have different kind of fun. We have different meanings that we should answer to those fun in different manner. What we can see is we have for some people the hard fun. The hard fun will be resolved by having a lot of challenge and a lot of skills. Meaning that if you do Dark Soul, for example, you will need to create some game mechanics that will, be, that will rely on skills. On the other side, for the people who want to have people fun, it will be more about having fun in group, having fun in solo, and etc. etc. as the serious fun and the easy fun. So yes, it's really important to yes understand your player, to understand what kind of fun they have, but also what kind of rewards they want. And in that way, we could define that in for a human, and I talk as uh, for in a psychological way, in a human, you have two types of uh, rewards that you want to target. You have intrinsic reward, as you can see here. Intrinsic rewards are the values, are all the feeling you can gain from making an activity. So it could be the feeling of superiority. It could be just a feeling of happiness. And on the other side, we have extrinsic reward. Intrinsic reward are all the outside rewards, like gold, like having a diploma, that you are motivated by. So yes, those motivation elements are also some game mechanics and features you need to answer. You have the uh, fun element. You have also why they want to act. And in that way, what we can see is 
In terms of, this example will be about social gaming. Here, if we see that we want to target here the networker that is more in an intrinsic reward, in terms of game mechanic, we need, in order for him to be pleased to stay in our game, we need to have virtual goods, to have badges, to have points, to have social status. So I mean here, if we, you target and you define correctly your target, you already know that those elements should be put in your game. They are not mandatory, but they will help you to be successful in that way. So yes, this theory is quite new, but he will, I think he will evolve a little more in the years and also depending on the other aspect. So yes, really important to understand the type of rewards you want to give to the player. So here we have seen that they, you have different type of player, you have also different type of fun, you have different type of motivation action, but what about the player itself? What about his cognitive function? What about what skills and how he can perform? And in that way, I will rely on uh, Myers and Briggs uh, type indicator, also called MBT1. They are, and you will see the relationship between uh, psychology. Myers and Briggs are a fellow student of uh, Jung. Jung is another psychologist, and you have the opposition between Freud and Jung. And they have defined uh, several characteristics, as you can see. Here, they have defined that we have four dichotomies. The four dichotomies are in introverted or extroverted, as you can see here and here. We have the intuition versus the sensing. We have, yes, the feeling versus also the thinking. And we have the judging versus perceiving. So yes, those four dichotomies, we will check in, we will see them in precisely after that. What do those, what does it matter? It's matter because regarding those 16 types, we have different kind of behavior. We have different kind of action. I mean, here what we can see is if we target someone that is more intro, into uh, introverted, intuition, feeling, and judging, we will see that this guy will be in a more contemplative behavior into your game. Also, we see that, yes, is creative. So we should answer for him in that way. So yes, psychology will really, really help us to target precisely the player and to answer the, him more accurately. So, here you say, yes, why not? You have talked about us in a psychological way. How, how can we apply it in game design? And in game design, the Myers and Briggs theory will be, trans will be translated into what we call the demographic game design one, according to what they do. And again, we will have four types of players. So here, it's more according to, yes, what they are behaving, what they are feeling. Here, for example, we have the conqueror. The conqueror is someone who will think, meaning that is someone who will rely on fact, that he will, he will analyze, so really precise task that will be according to him. And the judging element is here to indicate that he will perform only one task at a time. Therefore, yes, we cannot put a lot of stuff. And that's the kind of guy that will be attracted by Grand Theft Auto and other games like this, Counter-Strike, for example. On the other side, we have the participant. The participant, you can see it's a feeling guy, meaning that he will rely on his emotion in order to perform an action. He won't analyze it through fact, but from a personal point of view. And also, with the judging component, one task at a time. Here, the participant will be really motivated by the goal itself. and 
will not rely on conflict. That's the kind of player that we target with Mario Party, for example. The manager, the manager is a thinking guy, again, with a lot of tasks, analyzing it and perceiving. Perceiving means that he can handle multi multitasking and that's the kind of guy we want to, the kind of player we want to target with SimCity. And the ultimate one in the first approach of DGD1 is the Wanderer. The Wanderer is the guy who wants to have a lot of freedom of movement. He will do his action according to his feelings and in that way he can perform a lot of action. That will be the kind of guy who are attracted in adventure game where there is a lot of story, etc. So why, why I want to understand you to understand this? It's because with that, we will define also what are the core mechanics that we need. Talking about the kind of player we have, I can only, I have to talk about hardcore and casual gaming. And DGD1 is also uh, useful if you want to understand what kind of hardcore gaming or casual. And as we can see, the casual player and when I say casual, it's also uh, for the core. Yes, hardcore player is really, really low. And if I follow those two aspects, I have to conclude like this. Regard to all those things, if you target a conqueror, you will have different kind of fun, meaning a conqueror will be more target for a hard fun. The progress of the game should be more uh, adequate to uh, die and retry. The story also is part of the component of the game, as I say with the narrative. Here, depending on your player, they will, uh, they will be more fond of plot game. The Conqueror doesn't need a story, as we can see with Counter-Strike, whereas the Wanderer will really, really need some uh, really, st uh, really good story, involving story, as we can see with Skyrim, etc. And the last part, but not the last, is the social aspect. Already with this definition of player, we could see if the game need or not some multiplayer, and that's also really